He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. For a few minutes, I want to title my remarks today, The Gates of Hell. The Gates of Hell. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all that you are, Father. The grace that you've given us once again to stand in this place. And while we understand the building is not sacred, we know, Father, you are holy and you are in this place, making this place a sacred, holy place. I thank you, Father, for your grace now that will lead every word I speak. Let me speak, Father, out of the abundance of your spirit, that which you have anointed me to declare and not, Father, out of my flesh. That when we leave this house, we would be changed and transformed by the power of your word. For only your word has the power to change our lives. We give you great praise, honor, and glory for your word. And together we say in Jesus' name, amen. As one, we clap our hands, giving him praise as we're seated in his presence. It is this familiar interaction between Christ and his disciples that we, of course, celebrate the revelation of who Jesus is after Christ Jesus has asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And various ones have given the, the modern day or the current day opinion of Christ and who he was. Some say you are such, some say you are so. He, finally, Peter declares very boldly, he says, I know who you are. You are the, the son of the living God. You are God manifest in the flesh. It is here now that Jesus Christ says, that's right. And upon this revelation that I am God, will I build my church. The true church is built upon the revelation that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. And I'm thankful today that I'm with people that believe that Jesus Christ is the invisible God made visible. He is God manifest in the flesh. And that when you saw Jesus, you were looking at Jehovah. He said, for if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so it is we know the true church is found and built upon this revelation. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad that Jesus is more than just a prophet, more than a good man, more than a historical figure, more than, a, than an angel. Uh, he's not the second in a trinity, but he is the alpha and the omega, the beginning, the ending. He's Jehovah made visible. And when I say Jesus, uh, it is everything God is. It is the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. It is first and last. It is counselor. It's doctor. It's healer. It's way maker. It's demon cast out. It's come on, whatever I need is found in the mention of a singular name. I don't have to be confused when I pray or when I baptize. I know that just at the mention of his name. And so everything I do in word or deed, I do it in the name of Jesus. And Jesus says, Peter, that revelation is the foundation of the church. He said, and I want you to know that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And so I look at the word gates, it's a plural word. And I've went through scripture, and actually it's probably more of a Bible study this morning, and I will be conscious of your time. I wear there's a clock, and I'll follow that. But there are different gates of hell. And so I started studying them out a little bit, and the first gate of hell that I came across was in Genesis chapter 19 and verse 1, and there came two angels to Sodom at evening, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. The first gate of hell is the gate of Sodom. This, of course, is a, a sin of Sodom, which, of course, is sexual immorality and impurity. This is an attack that comes against us, uh, against each and every one of us. There's no age where you're exempt from the attacks of the flesh upon you. It's a gate of hell. It's something that will come against you. How, uh, however, many scholars agree that not only was the sin of Sodom homosexuality, but the sin of Sodom was actually even the greater sin was how they treated the messengers of God. Because God had not decided to destroy Sodom for homosexuality he said I'm going to go down and see I'm going to go down and see what's going on and so he sent the messengers and when the messengers arrived the Bible says that the men of Sodom desired to take advantage of him they did not welcome them they actually resisted them and said no we want to use you preacher for our pleasure 
but and God said I'm going to destroy this city because of the way they received the messenger let me tell you something it's important how we receive God's message and God's messenger let's be reminded in 2020 in a pleasure driven society that the preacher's job is not to preach me pleasurable he's to preach me out of hell and into heaven so preach preacher you don't have to please me just get me to heaven Come on, somebody. I said, hey, visitor friend, you're with people here today that take their eternal salvation. Come on. With greater importance than just temporal pleasure. It is a serious matter. And preacher, I need you to be as serious about me getting to heaven as I am about getting to heaven. So preach to me. And so it is that they received them with one that said, you can't please us, we resist you, we'll take advantage of you. That's why at Eastgate Church we honor them. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5 and 17, Paul is writing and he says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in word and doctrine. It is at Eastgate Church that we honor the elders that serve in church leadership. Our children's Sunday school teachers are are worthy of double honor what's double double of what you would receive from your children at your house twice that should be given to those uh, that are serving in leadership uh, at the church come on somebody double double done we honor them uh, especially those who labor in word and doctrine preaching is labor teaching is labor don't ever forget it amen for the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn and the labor is worthy of the reward it is so, friends, that everyone that I've seen attacked at the gate of Sodom despises the messenger. And every person that despises the messenger, I have never seen them end in success. But it is that we are too honored. That's why someone said, Preacher, I don't understand why our, our guest minister has a parking spot because we give them double honor. When they come in, they sit on the platform because we give them honor. When they come to the pulpit, we clap our hands, not because they're a better person, but because of the position that they feel, and we honor that, and we receive with gladness the word and the messenger. You're in a dangerous place when you resist, when you have a problem with the man of God and with ministry being honored. You're in a dangerous place, dear friend. You better watch it. You're at the gate of Sodom. The gate of Sodom. It's a dangerous place to live. So the first gate is the gate of Sodom. It's a gate of hell. In Abimelech in Judges 9 and 40, the next gate that I found, and there are several and I will go quickly. And Abimelech chased him and he fled before him. And many were overthrown and wounded even at the gate, the entering, I should say, the entering of the gate, the Bible says. The second gate of hell is the gate of the wounded. The wounded gate. There's nothing hell loves more than a wounded man. A wounded woman. So Abimelech now, he's the son of Gideon. Gideon, who with 300 men had slain the entire army of the Midianites, had been a great judge who had come from a small tribe and at first said, I'm, I'm not worthy. There's no way I could ever do what God has called me to do until he does what God calls him to do. And uh, he becomes very wealthy. He has many wives and concubines. Seventy sons are his offspring. And one of them was Abimelech. Abimelech was a wicked man. His lust for power got the better of him. He was so in love with power, he was willing to kill his brothers. And he did just that. He arrived at their house, and on a single stone, the Bible says he slew all of his brothers except for one who escaped. Sixty-nine of his brothers were murdered because the man wanted power. It's amazing what a man will do for power. And so he makes himself king over Israel where he rules for three years. And then civil war breaks out because someone's always going to stand up for what's right. And Gal stands up and rises up against Abimelech and the battle rages. Abimelech chases him down and this is a civil war. This is a war between the people of God. And between the civil war and in the middle of the civil war, at the entering of the gates, the people that were coming in, the new converts... Because they are the ones that suffer by the civil war in the church. We can't afford to have discord. We can't afford to be at the gate of the wounded. We can't be afford to be at the gate of Abimelech uh, that says, uh, slaughter who I have to, kill who I have to. My position is more important than people. You better watch out. If you put more priority on your position than you have people, you're at the gate of the wounded. Uh, and
You're not going to help people. You're going to hurt people. You're not going to go out and save people. You're going to lose them. They're going to die. Why? Because I'm at the gate of the wounded. And trust me, a wounded spirit breaks trust. A, a wounded man struggles to love again. A wounded woman ends up bitter and angry. It is daily my lot that I deal with wounded people over and over again. Let it never be said that the gate of Abimelech or the gate of the women of, of, of the wounded prospered at Eastgate Church we're going to stay united we're going to stay together we're going to stay as one I am not come on I know we might not have swords where we slaughter our brothers on a single stone in one day but we've got Facebook and forums and come on feisty thumbs Come on, I, I dare say that man's thumbs in 2020 have killed more people than all the swords in the Bible combined. You better watch what you tweet and what you text and what you post uh, because you don't want to wound somebody in your attempts to, to make a point. You'll hurt somebody, leave them wounded at the gate. Uh, not everybody can handle it. Come on, somebody. Uh, w my job is to love. My job is to care. My job is to serve. And so I got to be careful against the gate of hell the gate of Sodom the gate of the woman uh, wounded I should say it's 2 Samuel 15 and 2 and Absalom used to rise up early and stand beside the way of the gate Absalom's gate and when they any man had dispute to come before the king of judgment Absalom would call him and say from what city are you and when he said your servant is such and such tribe in Israel they would come in and and so here we find Absalom. This is David's son. He's got a problem. And this, is the, this is the gate of discord. We've seen the gate of Sodom. We've seen the gate of the wounded. Now we find hell's third gate, the gate of discord. Absalom, the son of David, who also had a lust for power, would sit by the gate and people would come needing counsel and needing some assistance from the king. And he would call them to himself. It's always to themselves. People who are sowing discord, they're not about your well-being, they're about themselves. And people would come in and he would ask them in verse 3, Absalom would say to him, see, your claims are good and right. So he would tell, ask them the problem and they would say, well, here's my problem. I have a problem with the king and I have a problem with the way he's doing this and I have a problem with my wife and I have a problem with my husband. I have a problem, whatever the problem was. And every time he had the same answer, you're right. Because someone that sows discord in your life will never correct you they will always say you're right you're right you know what you're right you're you know you're right you are right we, we really is it is I mean he does preach way too long you are right she is treating you wrong you are right you are, come on you've got to be careful for people that always if they've never corrected you they're not a good counselor if they've never looked you eyeball to eyeball and say you are a stupid moron what you need to go do is go home, buy your wife 37 roses, hold them all in your mouth at the same time, and apologize. If they Come on, buy her some chocolates, take her to Houston, the nicest room you can afford because you are a fool. If you don't have a friend, if you don't have somebody in your life, if all they're ever doing is taking your side, let me tell you something. Uh, they're out for themselves and not for you. You better be careful, friend. You better be careful, friend. You better be careful. But there's no man designated. There's no man designated to hear you. What he's saying is, you shouldn't be talking to me. And I shouldn't be talking to you. In the gate of discord, you will talk to people you shouldn't about things you shouldn't. If you're mad at your wife, you need to go talk to your wife. Or a marriage counselor or your pastor. But not in the gate of discord. If you're, that's, a, that's an attack from hell. That's a gate from hell. If you're mad at your boss, go talk to your boss, not your coworkers. That's sowing discord. If you're mad at me, come talk to me. Go ahead. Y'all like, ooh, I don't. Yeah, don't talk to your boss. If you're talking to somebody that can't solve the problem, it's gossip. But the last person you should talk to is Absalom. Because Absalom will say, oh, that I were the judge of the land. If I were the boss. If I was running this job, if I was the foreman, if I was the, come on somebody. No, 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 no. You see, the solution that a discord sower always has is themselves. If I was in power, you would be in a better place, but that is not true. Be careful of the gate of discord. 
The next gate I find is in 2 Kings chapter 7 and 3, and there were four leopard men, four lepers, at the entering of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? They said, Why are we sitting here waiting to die? The next gate is the gate of wait. These leopard men, they have been thrown out of the city. They are living daily to die. Every day they would wake up and be like, oh, we're still alive. Well, let's just live another day and wait till we die. Then they'd wake up the next day, living, waiting to die. Outside the gate of wait. There are many people that live their lives like this. Well, I'm, I'm still alive today. I guess I'll just... They live in fear of taking action. In fear of doing it. It's a trap. There's people that I know that have been waiting years. Well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 40 and 31 that I am to wait upon the Lord. That I might renew my strength. Now, hold on just a second. That wait means to expect. That wait means to look to. And so, yes, you have to be patient. And you have to be patient on God to do what only God can do. But while you are looking and expecting, he says, here's why you wait. Here's why you wait. Where's Noah? Noah, here's why you wait. That you may renew your strength. Get up. Wait on the Lord so that your strength can be renewed. So get down. Give me some push-ups. Get your strength renewed. It doesn't say sit there. It says your strength. While you're waiting, your strength is being renewed. They shall mount up. Get up. Get up. Get it. Mount up. Now jump. That's just jump. Go up. Jump. 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 They shall jump. They sh with wings as eagle. They shall run. 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 Is he? Come on. They shall run. I like Caleb. He he's he's a nobody runs alone. He follows that Eastgate rule. There's an Eastgate rule for all the new people we have. I, I got a feeling all the new people. We have one rule. This rule is nobody dances alone, nobody cries alone, nobody runs alone, nobody weeps alone, nobody shouts alone. We don't preach alone. We're all on the same team. I am waiting on the Lord, but my strength is being renewed. I am, they shall run and they shall walk. This is not a sit and wait on Jesus to solve all your problems verse. That's a, that's a gate from hell. It's the gate of wait. Sit here, I, like God, like Jesus is a socialist. He's not a socialist. It's not a sit on my pew, wait for my welfare check. That's not how Jesus rolls. That's a bad government system. This is a theocracy where you are the servant and he is the master. And if I am his servant, then ladies and gentlemen, I'm constantly looking to serve. I'm looking to do for they that serve, they that expect the Lord, they're running. Those that are waiting on the Lord are walking. Those that are waiting on the Lord are renewing their strength. Those that wait on the Lord are not sitting down doing nothing. They are actively pursuing the call of God in their life. Don't just sit on the bench. Whatever your hand finds to do, so somebody just say the next two words whatever your hand findeth to do look at your neighbor high five them and say do it do it do it go into all the world and preach the gospel lay your hands on the sick that they, well I'm just waiting till I get through the Eastgate University no 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 no. he doesn't say wait he doesn't put any prereqs on there he just says if you've got the Holy Ghost lay your hand do it if you've got your hand, come on, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, heal the sick. If you take care of the widow, work, clap in your hands, all you people. Shout, run, do it. The Bible is a book of constant action. God is never not in motion. Matter of fact, the first thing we find out about the Spirit of the Lord is that He moves. He's not a sit there and do nothing kind of God. Well, I preacher, I'm just waiting until I have a million dollars to start the business. No, you got to do it. Preacher, I'm, I'm just waiting on the perfect girl to stop by and ask me out on a date while I sit here in a dark prayer room. Then I'll get married. Baby, you're going to be sitting in that dark prayer room for a long time. You got to do something. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you guys think I'm being funny. I'm actually being serious. There's people that actually, that is their dating philosophy. I'm going to sit on the pew... And just wait till she, Jesus drops her down from heaven right next to me. It might work for some of y'all, but for I ain't never seen it happen. It didn't happen to me. I had to get out 
I had to get out and get some Tommy Hilfiger cologne. Now, Brother Joey's amen because we're in that generation of the clear bottle. Tommy, big Tommy on the, you know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? See, there's some people, Jordan, I got you smiling over there. You know what I'm talking about? You know what? Yeah. We would bathe ourselves in that back in the 90s, you know, all over the place. I had to get me some, I had to get a nice suit. I had to go to Youth Congress. You know why I went to Youth Congress? Because there was lots of pretty girls at Youth Congress. And I was single. And I figured, come on, I'm just talking to the single people right now. You, I just, baby, hurry up, open up the app and buy some stock in Tommy Hilfiger because it's about to go through the roof. <laughs> you, hey, I posted this picture once of, is, where's Jared Nash? <laughs> Newlyweds, I guess they're watching live stream. Hey, Jared, you need to get to church in Emily. You were here every service when you were single. What happened? Now you've been missing a whole lot now that you're married. Come on, Bubba. Come on, man. Just remember who hooked you up. It was me. Sucker couldn't get married. Put a picture on the internet. You know, said, Jared Nash, you all know the story. He gets married, but I had to do something. Then I got like 25 messages from moms and dads and other single people saying, would you mind putting our son and daughter on your Facebook page? I'm like, no, this is not a dating app. That was a joke. Do it yourself. Go to the singles conference. Well, if I go to the singles conference, the only reason I think I'm going is because I want to get married. Yeah, same reason you downloaded all those single apps. Why do you think just because you're wanting to look at pictures of people or something? Come on, hey, I got to get all, I got to keep going. But y'all know what, you know, hey, if you're single, you want to get married, you're going to have to go to the singles conference. And when you're there looking, which you should be, Look for somebody up at the altar that's worshiping and praising God and wor serving God. Do, do that. Do it. Just do something. I'm just waiting until I overcome my nerves until I invite somebody. Just, you'll never invite somebody. It'll never happen. You've got to learn to do it. But the word, here's what Deuteronomy 30 and 14 says, but the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do the word. Hearing it's great, but it's, I want to be a doer, not just a hearer. Here's David speaking to his son. He says, take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. Woo, I'm chosen. And now is when we run the aisles and we shout and we get excited because we are chosen. Oh, I'm so, and we talk and preach and celebrate and sing songs and dance and shout and backflip and spin and hoop and hurrah. Write books about being chosen. But then after the colon, he says, be strong and do it. Okay, we're chosen. We're the church provider. We're the church with the answer. Now here's what we got to do. We got to celebrate that we God has chosen us. Now we got to get up from the day to wait and get up because hell doesn't mind if we're chosen. Hell doesn't mind if the call of God is on your life. What hell is afraid of is if you get up and start doing what God has called you to do. I'm going to preach a little longer. I said, you got to do what God and David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not. Next words. Next words. Fear not. Because fear is what holds you back from doing it. And so in the name of Jesus, I come against every fear and the spirit of fear that's hindering you from doing what God has called you to do. Don't be afraid and don't be depressed. Come on, if you're facing depression, it's because God, come on, uh, God has got a call on your life. You are chosen, and the enemy's trying to keep you wrapped up uh, in constantly focusing on inward problems, inward fears. Uh, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with you. He'll be with you if you do it. He'll be with you if you go. He will do it. Hallelujah. I don't know, preacher. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you've just got to do it. First, what's the first miracle in the Bible Jesus that Jesus performs? Water into wine. The first miracle was Jesus continuing the party. See, Jesus is all about a party. Some people think that Jesus is some sour grape. And some of you visitors are looking at us like we're a bunch of crazy. No, 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 no. We're just having a party. 
every time we get together it's a party and Jesus is all about the party he's so much about the party he, the first miracle was no let's not stop it let's keep it going and so they run out of wine and, and, and Mary comes to Jesus in, in John chapter 2 and she says look we don't have any more wine it's going to be an embarrassment for the family and the party's not going to continue Jesus and here's the predicament that we're in in verse 4 of chapter 2 Jesus says he says what do I have to do with you he says my time has not yet come my hour has not yet come and, and here's, what verse, here's her response and, and Mary the mother of Jesus said unto the servants whatsoever he saith unto you that's the last thing she said she said just do it and if you will do it guess what guess what happened it happened it happened water was turned into wine I know you've got to have meetings and plans and charts and graphs I know all that I know but don't be I, don't be deceived a meeting didn't get anything done I just got to talk to all the meeting lovers I know we got to have them but there's some people that will meet and have a sense of accomplishment you didn't accomplish anything you just met I know saints and preachers that meet about revival all the time but meeting about revival doesn't bring revival you got it come on meeting about your business and meeting about your business plan and meeting that's got, it's important you got to do it but some people get stuck in the meeting at some point you got to go out buy a shovel and start working you got to get a bible study chart and start teaching this you just got to do it. You got to go out and do it. And that is the delay of the gate of weight. They sit there and die and never do what God has called me to do. Well, I'm just praying. I'm just praying. I'm just praying. Well, you, yeah. You know, there's, there's one time God said, he asked him, why on earth are you still praying? In Exodus chapter 14, 13, people, children of Israel. Now they've come up to the Red Sea. Enemies behind them. They can't get out. And, 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 and um, they go to Moses and they say, why did you bring us here? Did you bring us here to die? We should have stayed in, in Egypt. And Moses, he says, look, fear not and stand still. Don't do anything. <laughs> Freeze. Because that's what fear does to you, right? The roar of the lion is to fear, freeze the victim in fear. To, to stop them from running. Rah! And then he hits you. And there's some people at the gate of wait that are stuck in freeze mode. That are just sitting there waiting, fearful to do what God has called them to do. And God goes, uh, speaks to Moses in verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh, Wherefore criest thou unto me? He said, Why on earth are you praying? What are you saying, Pastor? We shouldn't pray? No, I'm saying you should pray. And when God says to go, then you got to get up off your knees and go. And go do it. He says, Speak unto the children that they go that they go forward why are you praying get up get up and go do what I've called you to do be what I've called you to be go 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 hey friends it's time to have revival we've been praying now it's time for us to grab come on we got to keep praying yes we got to keep praying but now we need to get flyers and we need to start inviting people to come we got to start knocking doors doing door hangers you got to start Come on, I, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the next step of getting past the gate of weight and going into all the world and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do I have somebody that has a call of God on your life that's chosen and is ready to go? Would you just put your hands together and say, I'm getting up and I'm going to do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes, revival's prophesied. Many a prophecy doesn't come to pass because we don't pray it into existence or because we don't go and do it into existence. Come on. We're, if, if the Hey, all y'all that are watching on live stream, when, the, when you get the vaccine, you better come back. And if they all come back, come on, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. And now look, I got to talk to online people. Look, online people, it's good you're online. I want you to stay safe. But if you're believing all the science, then you got to believe all the science. And if they say the vaccine's good, then you got to take it. And then you need to come back to church. Come on, somebody. You got to come back. At some point, you got to come back to church. I just got to talk to them. I, you got to come back to church. At some point, you got to come back to church. If you want to wait for the, but don't sit at home and say, well, wow, I don't trust the vaccine. Hold on. You trusted the same scientist that said 2.5 million people were going to die. Trust the same scientist that say the vaccine is good and take it and get yourself to church. Done. Done. 
So when y'all all come back, guess what? We're going to have this building packed full of people, and we're going to have to build. You know why? Because we've been doing it. We've been doing it. We've been doing it. We've been doing it. Woo, I know I, it gets tight there because you, you guys don't, I just got to talk to them. I got to talk to you. you. You can't be saved without the church. Let me just stay on that point. I feel a little resistance there. I'm not, when I feel resistance, I don't move on. We just keep hitting it. We just keep hitting that. Come on, you can't be saved sitting at home. This can only be a temporary place. During a time of pandemic I, I, We're not disparaging anybody that's trying to be safe And I ain't talked about this silly virus In a long time But I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to tell you You can't be saved without the family of God The Bible still says Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together Even more so as we see the day approaching But rather you've got to come to the church house And be together Why? Because you're a contributor to the house of God how are you going to do it? How are you going to go? How are you going to do it in the Old Testament? You, you, did they have a credit card that you could just swipe and pay your 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 bull or calf or your uh, doves? There was no paying your tithes online. You had to risk the pandemic to get to church because if you did not offer sacrifice, your soul would be lost. Friend, coming to the house of the Lord is a matter of our eternal salvation. What we're doing here this morning, visitor friends, I'm sorry. That's just Pastor Tuttle Sunday morning. Normally we do this Sunday. We just do it whenever God speaks on us to do it. But my eternal salvation must take precedent and priority. Ladies and gentlemen, I said our eternity is more important than anything else. It's more important than anything else. Nothing else matters. Nothing. I've got to be saved. I've got to be saved. Come on, come on, I've got to be saved. Above all else, I remember when you used to sing that song? Above all else, above pandemics, above persecution. Come on, somebody, same people that were shouting about they'll give their head for Jesus. Come on, let's go ahead and be real this morning and say we got to get to the house of the Lord. I can't forsake the assembling. I've got to be in the house of the Lord. Why? Well, I'm afraid. Do it. You can make it. Do it. You can make it. What if I die? Boy, wouldn't that be great? Get to go right to heaven. Well, if I die, because I got the coronavirus because I went to church, whoo, won't that be great to stand in front of the white throne of judgment and say, yeah, the reason I died is because I went to church. You're welcome. You're welcome that, you, that we're still having church. You can go up to heaven and say, yeah, I died because I went to church. And the person behind you will say, yeah, they, they beheaded me in China because I went to church. And the person behind them will say, yeah, they burned me at the stake because, wow, what a group of people you get to be a part of. What a group and an honor it would be to suffer, to die for the cause of Christ. Do you, hey, I wonder if I got something. I know you got your AR-15s ready, but do you have your willingness to die for the very thing you believe in? The test is now. The test is now. We've got to serve God now. We've got to be the church now. More than ever before, we've got to be the church now. I'm not saying don't be safe. You guys know all that. We got signs, wear masks, do all that stuff. It's real. I'm not saying it's not a real pandemic. What I'm saying is we can't live in fear. We can't live in constant fear. It is a sin to live in continual fear I rebuke the spirit of fear I'm off my notes but I'm in the Holy Ghost I rebuke the spirit of fear that has captivated uh, the hearts of so many the fear about this election the fear about the political system the fear that's put their faith in man's systems uh, in man's words uh, God I pray in the name of Jesus uh, that our faith would be restored in your word uh, that you said no evil can befall us uh, that nothing can enter into us uh, we can drink poison and it doesn't hurt us. We tread on the serpent. That's who we are. Is that who we are? Then if we get sick, God let it happen. If we get die because God... I've got faith in Jesus. I've got faith in the master. Woo! Hallelujah! I gotta keep going. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah! I love you online people. I love you. 
I love you. Hey, and the reason you know I love you is because we're having this little talk. Because Abimelech would say, oh, I understand. It's okay. Just sit at home for the next three years. If you sit at home and don't come to church for three years, you ain't going to be saved. You can't miss that much church and make it. I'm right. I am right. I'm going to tell you what starts happening. You start liking it. Oh, yeah, you do, because I was there on about week four. Marissa, I love you. We just have a little talk. And uh, about week four of this quarantine, I was like, man, I kind of like this. It's 5 o'clock. I'm in the swimming pool on Sunday. 5.30, I'm still, still lapping. I got 30 minutes before church to start. And I know all y'all said you all dressed up for church, but it's a lie. Y'all didn't dress up for church. Y'all like me. Got out of the pool, dried off. You know what I mean? Put some basketball pants on, t-shirt. I'm like, all right, we got three minutes. Hey, grab me, grab me a Dr. Pepper. Now y'all know, y'all all laughing because you know what I'm talking about. It was pretty cool for the first week when we were all freaking out. Second week, it was like, okay, th by the fourth week, we were like, hmm, I'm liking this. People calling, like, are we going to start canceling Sunday night church? Are we going to have Wednesday? No, 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 no. And all of a sudden, I started liking it. Thought, I'm pre-recording this message on Saturday, chilling out on Sunday. What a dream. And I realized if my flesh is liking this, we got a major problem. Because anything this flesh likes is not good for Matthew Tuttle. This flesh likes things it shouldn't like, and it's liking staying at home way too much. Way too much. You're saying, Pastor, you don't like to come to church? Yeah, there's times my flesh. Matter of fact, every time I come to church, my flesh hates it. My flesh is not a fan of church. It's not a, but my flesh is not the boss. My flesh is going to die and go back to dust. I'm not going to let it decide. It always opts for death because that is its end destination. Don't listen to it. Don't listen to your flesh. You got to listen to your spirit. You got to listen to the word of the Lord and trust this word because this word is guiding your eternity. Flesh is guiding your damnation. I want to follow salvation, not damnation. So preach the word to me, preacher. Well, that was good. Somebody shout, wow. Look at your neighbor and say, man, my pastor loves me. The next gate, and I'll go quickly. I've got five minutes. The gate, thank you. Amos chapter 5 and 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate and abhor them that speaks uprightly. The next gate is the gate of rebellion. This is one of hell's gates. The gate of rebellion is those that hate Correction. They are rebels at heart. Uh, Jeremiah says, But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Rebels hate rebuke. Uh, I've, I've just got to say, you, they hate rebuke. Uh, look at the rich young ruler, familiar passage of Scripture. He comes to Christ. He says, Jesus, I want to follow you. And here Jesus gives him the opportunity of a lifetime. He says, Okay, you can be my disciple. Could have been the 13th disciple. Could have been the replacement for Judas. Woo! Could have had a legendary life. And he says to, to him, follow me. And, and, uh, and, and the ruler says, look. He says, I have obeyed all the laws. He says, good. He says, sell everything you have and come follow me. He says, oh no, I can't do that. He said, I can obey the law, but I can't follow you know why? Because he was being attacked by the gate of rebellion. Because a rebel will obey the rules but never follow the leader. Well, I do everything the Bible says to do, but I'm not part of the system. I'm not submitted to the man of God. I'm not submitted to the system. I don't have to tell nobody. I don't have to tell anybody when I go out of town. I don't have to be accountable to a preacher. I don't have to follow the system. I don't have to do what's asked of me. I don't have to do any of that because I'm better than the system. Oh, but I pay my tithes. Come on, somebody. 
That's the gate. Oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost. That's the gate of rebellion. And guess what? It's a gate that will take you out. It's a gate from hell. It's a gate from hell. And guess what you miss out on at the gate of rebellion? You miss out on being an apostle. You miss out on having your name written down on one of the foundation stones of heaven. What a miss, buddy. What a thing you miss because you couldn't follow Jesus. Oh, the power of a follower. That's what a Christian is. He's a Christ follower. I, that means not my way, not my will, not my direction, but God, wherever you say to go, uh, I am going to go. And so I'm going to submit to, to your word, your man, your kingdom, your government system. See, Americans, we have a lot of problem. We got fine with the law. Oh, I'm not going to kill anybody. I'm not cheating on my wife. I'm not being homosexual. I'm not blah, 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 all these things. Uh, but we struggle with submitting to the government system of God. It is not a democratic republic. It's not a form of democracy. It is no elections. It's appointments. Appointed by God. And God said, this is how it's going to be. And you, we say, yes, sir, I'm in it. I'm going to follow the system. And when you submit, not only, come on, you can't say you're submitted to God, but not submitted to his government system. It doesn't work that way. He works through his system of government. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. The will of God can only be executed through the government systems of God. It can only happen that way. Woo! For I know not, I'm, I'm almost done. Amos says, For I know your many manifold transgressions, your mighty sins, they afflict the just. They take a bribe and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right that is here the gate of greed. An attitude that says, I'm consumed only with me. What benefits me? How can this bless me? What's me, 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 me? You better watch out. It's one of hell's gates. A gate that's no longer consumed itself with sacrifice. No longer wants to to give and to reach beyond but everything it's amazing to me that people pick churches based upon what's good for themselves I'm talking about their flesh preferences not eternal things hey friend when I'm looking to find a place where I must be saved get me to a place maybe they don't have the best youth program maybe they don't have the best music but do they preach the truth because that's what matters that's what matters that's what matters the next gate and I'm, I'm done Acts 3 and 2 and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered in the temple. The final gate is the gate of complacency. This man was wounded. His legs were maimed. Daily he begged for change. But he's asking for the wrong kind of change. He says, I, I need gold. No, you don't. You need legs. But for, here's the sad part. He'd been laid there his whole life. He had been laid in front of the church at the gate his whole life, content to cuddle with his trouble. Band-aid me. Let's not, I mean, this is the modern church that doesn't want to confront the problem because they're afraid of offending somebody. Oh, no, don't mention his legs. That'll make him uncomfortable, and everybody will notice he can't walk. That's what they do now. Now, let's all have a social justice meeting and gather together as much tuna as we can, and we'll make tuna salad, and we'll give him a ham sandwich, and we'll try to get him a cup of coffee from Mission Grounds. He don't need a cup of coffee from Mission Grounds. He needs legs. The crackheads in our, come on, somebody. The crackhead in our community doesn't need more donuts. and No, they need freedom. The broken marriages of Vider, Texas, they don't need more self-help and social justice. They need their marriages restored. And he set him there every day. See, the, he's sitting at the gate. He's not in the church. He's just close to the church. This is the gate of complacency where he's almost in, but he's not in. Kind of, it knows all the songs, just can't sing along. Knows, come on somebody, knows all about it, but can't participate in it. Only takes from, never contributes to. Not involved in any kind of ministry. Doesn't give his time to anything. He is a consumer only at the gate 
of hell. It's one of hell's gates. Rebellion. It's one of his gates, Sodom. It's one of his gates, complacency. And this is one that's captured the modern church. Just, just, give, us, just give us a couple coins and we're good. Just, just, just don't, no, 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 don't talk about the fact that my marriage is fun. Don't talk about the fact that I got a pornography problem. Don't talk about the fact that my marriage is fun. Don't talk about the fact, don't, don't, don't get into, don't get into anything that actually addresses issues. Just put band-aids on everything. Just, just, you know, I mean, we go to the doctor, just give me pain pills. Don't address the problem. We come to church, just give me Holy Ghost high. Preacher, just, just inject me with some of that feel-good stuff. I like one of those happy messages, you know, where you have little illustrations and you blow up things and woo. That's what I want. I want dim the lights down, make it a show, turn it into a big, come on. But we're not going to do that. Because the gates of hell shall not oh but preacher there's so many people that are going that way I know I know there's many people wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction see hell's gates are very wide and very many but the gates of hell all of them compromise rebellion lust and anger come on the gate of weight cannot prevail against the church of the living God the solution for your gate is the church the answer to the victory, the problem you're in is the church. The church will be triumphant over the gates of hell. Woo! As we stand, God speaks. And the angel of the Lord in Genesis 22 and 15 speaks uh, and he speaks to Abraham out of heaven uh, and he tells him, here's the promise. Uh, he says unto him the second time, verse 16, uh, and he said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not, this is God speaking to Abraham after he has almost killed his only son, withheld thy son, thine only son. He says that in blessing, look at your neighbor and say, I'm blessed. This is Abraham whose seed we are. This is fa Father Abraham. Had, remember the song? Remember the song? Had, and I am one of them. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm one of Abraham's seed. I'm one of Abraham's seed. He says, I will bless thee. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm blessed because I'm Abraham's seed. And in multiplying will I multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going to multiply. We're multiplying. We're multiplying. And the sand which is upon the seashores and thy seed shall possess possess thy seed shall possess what are you going to possess what are you going to possess the gate what gate the gate of whatever comes against you it's in your spiritual DNA to, that the gate cannot prevail the gate of your enemy cannot prevail rebellion's going to come and try to set down but don't you let it the of complacency is going to come against you you get up you clap your hands you get involved in another ministry the gate come on of sexual come on immorality will come against you but I'm part of the seed that overcomes the gate I'm part of the church I'm part of the church you're part of the greatest thing that ever happened so don't you ever leave it I said don't you ever leave the gate of the city of God for in that, oh, lift up your head, oh, ye everlasting gates. And the King of glory is going to come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. There's somebody in this house that the gates of hell have come against you. I've listed several. There's many more. But as I've listed, I, can, I believe there's a witness here that can say, you know what, Pastor? Yeah, one of those has hit me. Do I have a witness that will say, yeah, I've, I've been hit with some of that stuff. Uh, I've just come to tell you the devil's lied to you and told you you can't get up, that you're stuck and you're going to die. He's a liar. He's a liar. Whatever hell has come against you with today, I've come to remind you that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. 
That's why you got to get in the church. That's why I said, I'll go back to that point. That's why you got to get to church. Because uh, by yourself, the gates of hell prevail. But when you're part of the church, the gates of hell can't prevail. No matter what you're in, whatever sexual sin you're in, whatever sickness that you're facing, no matter whatever thing that's got you bound up, uh, spirit of rebellion, attitude, whatever it is, uh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, come on, spirit of discord. Uh, I feel the Holy Ghost uh, saying, get in the church. Uh, get in the church. Uh, get in the church. Uh, come on, if you're not social distancing, why don't you just grab somebody by the hand, uh, bring them up to the front, uh, and say, I need the church. Uh, I need the church. I need the church. Uh, hey, friend, you need the church. Uh, you, I will build my church, uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Uh, many members of this one body, uh, we're one body, uh, and we're in it together. Uh, we're the church. We're the church. Hell's afraid. Uh, hell's not afraid of you on your lonesome. Uh, he's afraid of you linking up. Uh, with the church. Uh, only the church can withstand. Uh, come on, the attacks of the adversary. Uh, I'm thankful, Father, for the ecclesia. I'm thankful, Father, for the group. Uh, I'm thankful, Lord, for the body. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that I am of Abraham's seed. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it. Lay your hand on somebody. Come on, be the church. Be the church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Visitor friend, if you're under attack, if depression has got your mind, if anger has captivated your heart, if bitterness is stealing your life away and you're waiting just to die, you can get up from that gate. Come on, if you're just living day in and day out, looking at the clock and wondering when it will all end, get up from that gate. God has has a purpose for you. Uh, come on, there's a mission for your life. Uh, come on, don't let the gate of hell uh, attack you. Don't let the gate of the adversary be victorious in you. Uh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Greater is he.